back and you look at some of these others again, even the, where is it at? The foundation, grip height, 2.65 inches. Yep. Yeah. Well, is it, can you not put a AR-15 style grip on that? Yes. You can, yeah. So the Ergo Airs and all those. So you could get a really oh, yeah, you could. big oh, yeah. grip if you it, wanted. Yeah. yeah. Not saying, that, that, but you lose your adjustability. Yeah. That yeah. thing has the adjustability. So to Josh's point, with, with the... With the chassis, almost all of them. Yeah. I mean, there's even. I've got a uh, Oryx sitting over here. This is a great example, right? Here's an Oryx. This is the MK machine grip with. I've got I, all the different inserts and stuff you can put on it. I put a palm swell on one side. It's got a thumb shelf over here, even though they have one milled up here. It kind of just. And then it also keeps my trigger finger out, right? Yep. So. Yeah, it looks so thin. It is. It's terribly thin. But when you, it's you light. when you get to that, <laughs> I, so pass. that that hasn't been showed on the channel. But eventually, that'll have a Savage Mark II in it, um, and oh. we'll get to that point. Hey, you might point. as well just throw well, all the rest of these freaking guns away if you're going to yeah. see a Savage Mark II. I'm going to the pinnacle now. Everybody who's ever, in the world. Yeah, everybody who's ever commented on my channel and owns one shoots uh, one whole group out to 150 yards with Blazer. Right, so yeah. Just throw this crap away. Yep. That's what the NRL says. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to take that dig. <laughs> uh, so, you know, there there's some very, you know, particular points. We, we've compared, you know, the T2A to the T4A. Now, Dalton also has a CZ457 PRS that yep. you've highly customized at this point. Yeah. And I think it's interesting to compare the numbers on it. Grab that stock real quick here. Just replace the, the foundation with it. Blasphemy. Oh, that's missing a gun. Yeah, that, that, the gun's in Texas somewhere. <laughs> getting worked on. Yeah, getting a barrel. So, this is Dalton's PRS for the CR, CZ457. This came yep. on your gun as the in the stock trainer yep. configuration. Yeah, I bought the VPT is the model I call it. Um, for the customizing, it's just got a weighted arc rail from 360 Precision. Their adjustable cheek piece which I installed myself. It's the KMW loggerhead system. Uh, saying, did you cut this yourself? I did. We did that down at the pawn shop with... Uh, nice. Yeah. Um, like uh, one of those coping uh, uh, saws. We, 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 tried, we tried a lot uh, of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did that one on mine. Yeah. And I did it with like a Japanese saw. But have you ever used yeah. one of those things? Oh, yeah, the, yeah. Yeah, my dad had one. That's the first time I ever touched it. I would not yeah. recommend... <laughs> doing your own stock work with a Japanese no. saw for your first time. And I wish I could. Crazy. There's a guy that actually offers that service. I wish I could remember his name. We tag him in the video. Oh God, yeah. Yeah, but anyway, okay. long story short, that's got the KMW like you all the manners do. The manners and they would do it. Yeah, but the lead time's pretty high, I believe. I digress. Uh, rail, cheek piece, been glass bedded. It comes with pillars. Uh, the one thing I thought was really neat about this, I've always wondered, I never had a PRS model manners to compare this to, because this is kind of modeled after the PRS one. Um, I always wondered how close it was, and by the measurements that we took off Chris's, it was actually really comparable in the grip length and height. Uh, the one thing... But it did have some key differences. Yep. It had some key differences. Well, something I want to mention on that is, too, we measured off the rear action screw, and the rear action screw measurement is going to be kind of skewed because you're talking about a totally different platform. But you are, yeah. Grip, you know, palm swell, grip width, grip length, you're, you're talking the same thing as the PRS. Matter of fact, I even, for shits and giggles, measured the fore end length. It's the so, same. So, like, <laughs> just raw numbers to raw numbers, uh, the 457 PRS and the PRS-1, so the 457 grip width, 2.136 inches. PRS-1, 2.145. We're talking 10 thou. Yeah. That's um, probably me measuring. Yeah. And then grip height, 3.1 to 3.1. Yep. Now, that, like you talked about, from the action screws, you know, we have, I'm showing about an eighth inch. Yeah. 
Right around 100 foul to 120 foul. And I'm sure difference. that is, like I said, that's basically from being a CZ receiver to a 700 well, yeah, that, receiver. Yeah, that's a 700 foot print. This yeah. is a CZ. I don't know that, that that number relates. Where all the other ones are comparable in that sense, because yep. that action screw should be in the same spot relative to the action, right? Yep. But, so, if you, if you shoot a PRS-1 on your centerfire gun, or even a PRS-2, and you want a trainer, but you don't want to spend five thousand dollars building a voodoo. Yep. The CZ know, VPT. The, the CZ plausibly would get it would get you the same ergonomics. Yeah. And I'd caveat to that, this is actually the older model. So this is the model after the PRS one, as I stated. The new one I don't have. Ain't been around one yet, and it's similarly shaped to the LHR and the TCS. Uh, it's got the L L R. Is it LRH or LHR? L A Long Range Hunter LRH. LRH. Yeah. Um, Had to look at my notes. Anyway, yeah, it's <laughs> it's got the shallower forend, uh, more blocky, more square. Uh, it's got the newer style cheek piece like this one. I had to put in myself. It's got the uh, lightweight cheek piece riser system like the LRH. Um, well, is it a whole cheek piece or is it that so, one sided deal? Well, I'll bring that one around. With everything you see there. So this is my NRL Hunter rig as it sits at the moment. I hope you can see the color. <laughs> really, well. there there is blue and purple in this stock. It looks pretty cool though. I mean, I can give you that. Me, I couldn't get away with it, but I think you're big enough. You can. I man, I, I wished it was pink. No, I think the blue and purple actually looks pretty cool. <laughs> this rifle, this is a Curtis Axiom. The barreled action that you've seen in other videos, I've used it. In my PRS rig, this is a 25 Creed more. Yes, that means I'm going to have to hit power factor. I need to shoot a 135 grain bullet at least 2,820 feet per second to hit power factor. Uh, my goal is to land somewhere around or anywhere between 2850 and 2900. Um, this is a 24 inch benchmark barrel, Timony trigger. This is the brand new Manners LRH stock. Just got it in. This is in their Manners Blue. Um, it has the DB, or no, not the DBM. This has the M5, uh, the mini, M5 chassis. mini chassis in it. Three and a half inch Arca rail pick front to cut down on weight. The stock weighs in at like 1.9 pounds. I'm running a set of Hawkins Ultralights, uh, Maven RS4 Optic. Um, right now we've just got a whatever bipod I had sitting in the house. Uh, the plan is to run the MDT ground pod, which is sitting over there on that stock. Um, but this is, this you cannot just adjust this, this to save weight. Yeah. They went to a spacer system in here. So, uh, so here. Josh and everybody else knows, if you ain't seen it, this is the cheek setup that the new CZ VPT will come out with. Yeah. So, <laughs> the cheek piece is a separate molded piece, and it just sits on a dovetail. It rides no. on the dovetail of the stock, and it has spacers that goes in between it and the stock. It gets your height adjustment. Oh. So on this particular stock, the LRH, you have a grip width of 1.99 inches, so just shy of 2. Might, you might as well call it 2 inches. Yeah. Uh, a grip height of 3 inches, and a grip to rear action screw measurement of 1.2. So... You know, your others, like the T4A and the PRS-1, they're measuring in an inch and a quarter. Yeah, so you're getting We're a little bit... missing 50 thousandths. You're getting a little bit closer to that trigger. Yeah. Plausibly. I mean, yeah. our, our measuring method was pretty rudimentary, okay? So there's some there's some, oh, yeah. some room for give or take in there. But it's very, very close to what I shoot on the other two manners I have. Um, my This stock over here, uh, the PRS-1, that... That will be and continue to be my primary uh, precision rimfire stock. Um, the T4A will uh, go to a new PRS build I'm going to be working on for a different uh, setup. We'll get into later where the foundation is my primary open class PRS build. Yep. So. You know one thing I've been messing with? Hmm. And this gun is, is clear. Um, because I shoot so much stuff on YouTube, although I have multiple ACCs, I have a foundation and 
some other stuff, but I have changed my grip recently. And one thing I noticed is that changing my grip, I don't notice any difference in anything because traditionally you would come here and this has a nice little thumb shelf. The ACC is going to be more onto the side and MPA is going to be more like this. And then the foundation, they're all different. And when you're coming into the palm swell here and using this thumb shelf, you're basically stuck here. And then whatever the difference is. So right here for me, this is a little long. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't have like dwarfish small hands. Um, they're just not as big as old meat hooks over there. But <laughs> I can't get 90 degrees on this trigger. Yep. And I don't think we set these pretty low. But to kind of navigate that, now I've been coming in from the side and allowing the tips of my fingers to Finger touch here. Fingertip standoff, yep. And then, so no matter what stock it is, I just come in here, and the very tip of my finger is what rests on the trigger and the stock. And I can shoot this and go back to the ACC, and I don't feel any different. And the only reason I switched is because I dry fired both this way and this way. And for me, dry firing on this grip, like I had way less reticle movement during and after the shot. I had basically zero reticle movement. So if you're going back and forth from your hunting rifle, this, that, and the other, and you find yourself searching for this and you see people doing weird stuff like wrapping their thumb over because there's nothing there, yep. maybe something like this. And I didn't. The I forget the guy's name. He's got a ridiculously awesome beard. I already hate him because of that, but he shoots for MDT. Um, he makes videos for MDT, but he's okay. an MDT shooter. He's got a freaking awesome beard. But <laughs> you got to listen to people with awesome beards. Um, Why don't you listen to me? But your beard sucks. <laughs> <laughs> but he shoots like this, and he was showing that. And, yeah. <laughs> and I just thought that was pretty cool. Um, yeah. You know, it kind of well, negates a, some of that. I'm kind of gl glad you mentioned that because that's something that, I remember when I first really started getting into watching YouTube, reading the forums, yada, yada. And one of the guys that always popped up the most was Sniper Side Frank Galley. You know, yeah. he was like the, the guy to listen to on instructional rifle videos. Yeah. And him and Jacob Bynum at Rifles Only, they always talked about floating the thumb, the fingertip standoff, you know, yeah. the whole change of the grip where you're not inducing torque into the, the stock whenever yeah. you shoot. Like you said, less vertical movement, less tension, yeah. more natural. Yeah. But... Yet again, it kind of goes with all these dimensions we're talking about on these stocks because yeah, you what know, are the differences? They're all well, different, yeah. And I'll tell you one thing. If you do not have a balanced rifle, though, if you have a rifle that's like a traditional rifle stock set up and you're trying to shoot stuff, this is not going to work. No. Because on a rifle that's not balanced, you're holding the rifle with this. So... I don't have any problems because my I make sure my rifles are balanced. When I put the gun down, it holds itself there, and this hand doesn't really do anything. I'm not really driving anything. I'm more driving it with my shoulder pocket, but if this gun is not really well balanced, you're going to need to have that traditional grip. But like yeah. you said, the more you know things you're introducing into the stock is the more things that can go wrong. So this, yeah. there's you contact the palm of your hand and the tips of your finger and when you pull the trigger you're pushing the trigger back in yep uh, instead of trying to curl um it's a little easier but it's something if you've never tried it give it a try i dry fired it like five times immediately saw it was better for me um you know i used it at gaston obviously that didn't work out real great so <laughs> i'm not saying it's going to change anything i still sucked when i showed up to the match yep. i just had a better grip to suck with yeah, i mean you still shot top 10 though I did. Yeah, I, I didn't do too bad. I was kind of on a little bit of a streak, and I had to take... It was like two two weekends in a row that I just every, struggled. Every once in a while, the shooting gods have to humble a person. Absolutely. Yeah, or and, and for me, it's piss like, you off. <laughs> just piss you <laughs> off, yeah. For me, it's like I get... I'll be like, oh, I had a great match. Awesome. You know, I'm top five, top three. Hell, I, depending on the match, I'm really happy with the top ten finish. Shit. Yeah. Because I... I'm, most of the time, I shoot middle, middle to high middle of the pack, and I have my days. Shield Solutions. Yeah. Where it's like we're gonna battle it out for last place. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was uh, that was an interesting day. That oh, was yeah. for you and me both. Just 
and that that may be another topic for BS at the bench, but it's just one of those days where did I go and shoot? Did I have fun? Yeah. But was I miserable the whole fucking time I was there? Absolutely. Yeah. You know? Well, I've gotten to the point now where the NRL 22X match at Gaston, that match irritated me so bad. And not because I where I placed. I think I finished ninth or whatever, but I wasn't disappointed in where I placed. I was just disappointed with myself the whole day. But the worst thing about going to a match, you pay, you pay whatever you pay, which is kind of inconsequential, but... I paid seventy dollars. I shot a match, and I didn't win. So objective number one, of course, everybody goes there to win. So I didn't win. Objective two is like find out where I struggled, so that I can go back and work that. And so when I come back next time and face those same problems, I'm better at those problems. Like the one thing I've learned being here is weak side. So I'm not disappointed if I go to a match and I lose, but I find things that I can do to improve for next time. But I went there all day. Shot 11 stages, shot over the top of targets, struggled with things, made really bad choices, um, you know, just shot and had some <laughs> really bad, like, just shooting sequences where I was just doing things I never do. But I was getting more and more mad as I went because the stages that went bad were things that I knew I was good at, shooting off a tripod yep. and um, having a lot of movement. Those are the things, that, you know, where I excel. And having generous targets and missing and not knowing why just irritated me so much because I was like, I well, left there not knowing what to work on. Yep. You just said something that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> well, I, yeah, I, I, I was every there. 30 seconds. <laughs> I was there. I remember that. The match director was Doug Bowes and D, DJ was there. Oh, you're going target size. And, and you know how they, before every match they put on, all the targets are very generous. They're oh, yeah. huge. Yeah. They're huge. Yeah. It's going to be huge. That, them lying <laughs> sons of bitches. Well, some of them are like the bus. You, well, you dropped like one on the bus, right? It's something like that. I don't remember. So we had some, there were generous targets out there for sure. And there was only. I will say the long range, those were the biggest targets I've ever seen Doug Bowes put out. Really? Yeah. Well, we didn't have a... We had more of like a semi-long range stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, it, with the it, same targets he normally runs out there. But I was just irritated because I was missing targets that were fairly big. And I would rather go to a match with teeny tiny targets and very like tough win conditions because when you make a mental mistake, it doesn't hurt you as bad because people are going to drop points. But when you go to a, a stage where it's worth 15 points and you know everybody and their brother shot 11 to 15 points and you shoot six then that is just like you just might as well just go home and i remember uh bud actually told me when i bombed that he was spotting like helping ro i bombed that stage shooting over the back so those targets he told me go rezero your rifle and one i was mad so you know like somebody tells you something reasonable to do when you're mad <laughs> you're just not gonna do it it doesn't matter how much sense it makes but at that point it didn't matter because you know, Bud told me even after a match, he got second. He was like, you'd have been up there if you'd have zero. I was like, no, man. I bombed that stage. I whiffed a ton of shots. There was no way. And just like Ricky Bobby says, if you ain't first, you're freaking last. <laughs> so it didn't matter. I don't. I didn't want to go over there and find out my zero was. Actually, my zeros, I haven't shot the gun since. I guarantee you my zero was not off, but it was just one of those days where weird yeah, stuff happens. You know, at that match... Bud lost a carbone by like less than a point. Really? Yeah. If if, if Bud had hit one more target, he would have beaten oh, Carbone because by of the way a NRL few tenths yeah, the time. Yeah. yeah, he would have beat him. Which one, is funny. One impact. You one. know, he had like a what a four or five hour drive home. Yeah. I guarantee you, he, the whole way he drove home, <laughs> oh, he's yeah. like, oh, that stupid <laughs> stage. Oh, that stupid stage. Hey, hey, he called me at one point. And like when I saw him before he left the match, and he was, oh man, you know this is, you know, he yep. he was in pretty good mood. That man had like five hours to stew on everything he did wrong, yep. <laughs> and I'm sitting over here finishing in like sixteenth place, <laughs> thinking, man, these guys did awesome. Yep. And then he calls me and informs me of everything he did wrong, and I'm like. I wish I was good enough to think like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, the one thing I've noticed, too, is coming out here is 
and not having Chris Simmons around. So <laughs> let me preface this by saying if you shoot in our neck of the woods and you're shooting against Chris Simmons, if you have a bad stage, you lost the match because Chris doesn't have – he cleans matches. Like, he doesn't clean stages, he cleans matches. So if you have a bad stage, you already lost. But that's not true everywhere, and I have a bad habit of having a bad stage thinking I'm 30th place and giving up mentally and just saying, ah, who yep. cares? I'm not going to win anyway. I'm just going to do this or whatever, and you just quit thinking your way through. But then, by that, I thought I would be 20th place. I was ninth. You know, yep. Had my mental game been better, maybe had I felt better or something, that probably was part of that. But that is- maybe I could have been fourth or fifth and not ninth. Well, that's a that's a really interesting part about the PRS or any kind of of these positional types of competitions, whether it's NRL, PRS, Mars, Hunter, whatever, MWLR. right? MWLR, MW, <laughs> M- <laughs> hi, <laughs> MWLR. You know, we're all out here and we're shooting in a very small group, right? Yeah. We're shooting in squads of as small as four or five people up to eight to ten or three folks, three yeah. <laughs> have some small matches from time to time but i actually you know, you're, you're, doing that now i would never want to do that again shooting what? a squad of three. Oh yeah it doesn't give you enough time to mentally prep yourself yeah i think it needs, at least five to six because you have to have like i found that going in like i was saying thing i would go up like my mag's not loaded or this or um, you know, you go up and it's like you're halfway through. You're like, "What was I supposed to be doing again?" <laughs> like, try, okay, try, yeah, try yeah. shooting in a squad of three with your kid. Oh yeah, I gave up on that. <laughs> yeah. I was, it was like madness all day. I'm like, yeah. "Oh god, oh god!" And then I tripped over him. Yeah. yeah. And the rest of the day, I'm like, I don't know if it looked like I was gimping or not, but I'm telling you, every step I took was painful. Yep. Yeah. But it was anyway. So. You know, we've we've talked about all kinds of stuff. We've we've been down the road of stocks. There was at least one stock on here we did not touch base on terribly. We did measure a Gunworks verdict. Um, yeah, yeah, for the, it's over there somewhere. For the three of you out there that can afford to own one, <laughs> <laughs> that, may, that may want this information. Well, this is kind of a topic I wanted to go over anyway. So the Gunworks is another one of these. Oh, swap, yeah. oh, here. Trade out. Trade out. How much is this? A lot stock. of stock. Yeah. I paid eighteen thirty for it new. Good. Well, ah. that was a long time ago. They're over two thousand. They're, they're over two thousand now. So is it made of like twenty dollar bills. So the reason why I wanted to kind of talk about this stock in particular was yes, it's expensive. Yes, it turns a lot of people off of it. But as a guy that has a hard time finding the stock that fits him. I, I am very particular about how the stock fits me. Reason why I kind of come to Chris with this video idea. Uh, this stock, I feel like, does not get enough attention. I get it's expensive. I get Gunworks is not exactly in the PRS scene as much as possible. Time out. He says all this. He sold the stock to me. <laughs> okay, well, I'm just, I'm just fucking. With well, yeah, I, mean, I don't know if I'll well, put look, that in the video. Or there's, not, a, but, <laughs> there's a sucker born every minute. <laughs> but now. no, so the reason I I bought this stock was kind of a twofold. I wanted the manners. I've had a history of manner stocks. I love them, but their lead times was way long for what I actually wanted. They didn't have something sitting in inventory that was going to appease me. At the time, Gumworks could guarantee the stock to me in I think 30 days. I can't oh, remember. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's so. Moving. And having bought this stock, yes, I don't own it no more. It went to Chris. Honestly, I probably wouldn't have sold it if I wouldn't own it be close to home, because this stock is kind of near and dear to me. This stock has a lot of features that I wish other companies would kind of go after. For one, right off the bat, the negative comb. And what I mean by that is the comb height is not square or flat across the top. It starts off lower than it is in the back. You wouldn't think it'd make much difference, but man, under recoil, it makes a lot of difference. If you ever feel like you're getting beat up on your face in a, in a center fire match, or even a hunting scenario, you know, you kind of get in a rush and you have a surprise shot, you're under stress, and you're not exactly getting a proper cheek weld, and it kind of bruises your face or whatever. you, that stock doesn't have that. Um, 
the back end as he's playing with. We talked earlier about indexing the shoulder, you know, having the rifle level and square every time, and how often are you actually going to do that? Where's the other grip? With that stock having the... gangster shoot it. <laughs> I've been seeing a lot of this on... on Break yourself, yeah. fool! <laughs> <laughs> There's another grip around here somewhere. It's up here, I believe. Oh. But anyway, um, with the adjustable butt, it, it actually allowed me to, for a guy that doesn't index in the pocket necessarily. I index more on my clavicle in my chest, rather. Um, I'm able to kind of get it out of the way of my actual collarbone and clavicle and, and get a more natural feel, but still have that center of line that you, you know, rather than canting your face over, you're dropping down into the scope. Um, anyway, I digress. Well, you, bro you bring up some interesting points on this stock. So, yeah. I, as you talk about that, and we... we you're getting into more ergonomics. Yeah, and absolutely. From from my professional ex perspective on it, right? Mm -hmm. it, it, and I don't mean that as a shooter or something. So for anybody who doesn't know what I do for a living, I'm a product development tampons. engineer. No, I do not. <laughs> he draws pretty pictures. I mean, pop <laughs> I, I draw pretty pictures mm -hmm. for a living. I, I, I was a, I've I worked with my hands for over a decade and what have you. I, I was a welder and a fabricator. But uh, currently, in today's world, I'm a product development engineer. Yeah. And so a lot of things I have to do revolve, we, we design things with ergonomics in mind, right? Yep. Uh, particularly for me, like I have to worry about how a individual will sit in a seat and index uh, throttle, uh, steering wheel. I, I don't work in automotive, but we're not getting into what I do. So, but looking at this, I can see some of the concepts, some of the, you know, this is this is more of a very personal viewpoint on what I do. What I do is more dumbed down, right? I have to worry about, like, line of sight to gauges and all this kind of stuff. But this, I, I can see what you're talking about here, right? Mm -hmm. You think about the geometry of your, of your cheekbone, of your face, or what have you, um, and how some of these lines move around. This stock comes with two different grip inserts. We have measurements on both, by the way. Yep. But that allows you some flexibility, right? Some you you can kind of personalize it to yeah. yourself. Um, it, all the way down. There's just a lot about this stock. When Dalton told me he was thinking about getting rid of it, I couldn't bear the thought of it going very far outside of our yeah. reach. So. Um, it, it, there's a lot of uniqueness to this stock. It has a uh, Seekins bottom metal uh, set up for AW mags. AW right? mags, yep. Currently, I've got a Rimac sitting on in this. Uh, I haven't shown this setup on the channel. We're we're still kind of playing with it. I know it's got a ginormous muzzle brake on it. We were playing with it like a like a tuner. Tuner. It's it's the same concept. <laughs> Move metal around. Wait. Anyway, so you know there's. There's a lot of things here where this is another one of these hybrid systems, but this is like a hybrid system slightly beyond like what is over here. Yeah. Now, Manners has a version that I would say is probably closer to this, and that'd be like the TCS. TCS, yeah. Uh, where you can adjust, which this one you can't adjust length of pull, but you can adjust how it indexes to your shoulder. To a sense you can, yeah, but digress, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So with all that being said... You know, we get into the measurements. You know, you've already heard some of the baselines on all this stuff. With the competition grip, which is not what's on it right now, it's the more vertical grip. Uh, Dalton has it, so that would be this one here. Um, you change this out, now you have more of a vertical grip. You have a grip width of 1.99. Oh, sorry, wrong. That is the wrong one. Where did that? Oh, here we go. 1.9 inches, yeah. so we're, we're just shy of that 2 inch mark that most of the manners were hitting. You have a uh, grip height on the competition of 2.4, so it, right in that standpoint, it's probably a little bit closer to the foundation. Yeah. Um, which also, you know, you, you talk about how you, you, your hand's a little bit smaller. Yeah. The, that probably translates to why you got along with this exactly. one so well. Yep. Um, and then from the grip face to the action screw, we're at 1.1 inches, which is identical to the foundation. Yep, exactly. Now, you go to the others, you know, it's a, that's a solid 100. 
sorry. That's a solid hundred thousandths difference or, you know, just shy of an eighth inch or so. And I, th I feel like at an eighth inch, I can tell a little bit. Oh, yeah, Especially absolutely. when you're trying to get a 90 degree pull on your yep. trigger. But uh, compared to like the Manor stocks, it, 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 it does seem to be a hundred thousandths to an eighth inch yeah, shorter. Yeah, yeah. Now, we go over to the standard grip, which is what's on the stock currently. Um, this is the first time I've ever uh, mounted it on there myself. We have, again, a grip width of 1.9, yep. so very stereotypical of what all of these hybrid or stocks are running. Um, but now, in grip height, we go to 2.8 inches, so we're a lot closer to the manner's grip, to the manner's grip length. Yep. So, you know, for my hand... Now we're, I've got more room to get my ginormous yep. paw on there. But here's where I feel like things, even even for as big as my hand is, and I by no means do I have the largest hand ever, but out of the three of us, I probably do. Yeah. From grip to action screw, it's an inch and a half. Just over. It's almost uh, an inch and nine sixteenths. Yep. Yeah, I'm feeling yeah. this. Like, it's way back there. It's, it's way out. The yeah. tip of my finger is yeah. the only thing that can reach So that. Even I, for me, that's that's a long way. When I researched yeah. this stock, and partly, you know, back Slap to why it. I like this, at the time I bought this, I wanted kind of a hybrid jack-of-all-trades, do-it-all rifle. I wanted a switch barrel rig, which the action that was in it was. I It's a Curtis Vector with the set screw tenon. <laughs> I've got a couple different barrels I can put in and out, depending on what I'm doing or what I want to shoot. But I wanted something that was going to be lightweight enough and ergonomically I could hunt with every day if I wanted to, but also screw a different barrel on and go shoot a match. And I got to say, this thing done it very well. The weight comes in right at four pounds with everything it can do, all the adjustments, all the attachments, full length bottom or a arc rail. They got an interesting little M lock section up here and a flush cup. So you can mount a rail, external rail, which comes in pretty handy for mounting like a magneto speed on, you know, mm -hmm. heating up Parker rail space, um, what have you. You talk about length of pull. There is some length of pull spacers and reduction you can do with that system. You gotta buy it extra. Um, now, yeah. one thing I will say is like when I originally acquired it from you, yeah, I was looking at this stock as an NRL hunter option. Yeah. Now, if I'd have went with a carbon fiber barrel and stuff like that, and in the future I may. Right now, yeah. I'm kind of I'm sitting at a point where I'm kind of gearing toward open heavy mm -hmm. for the upcoming season, for the matches I can go to. Um, this stock I could tell you weighs in at just a touch over four pounds, and unless you're going with one of those lightweight barrel options, you're not you're gonna, you're, yeah. pro you're you're definitely not going to make light class without light barrel and a whole lot of maybe a titanium action and stuff like that. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying it's impossible by no means. It, it can certainly be done, but you're going to have to spend some money in the barrel to action territory, uh, really light object, yep. all that kind of stuff. For me, uh, wanting to use some of the components I already had, um, it just it wasn't going to work out. But luckily, I scored this Rimex, and uh, you guys will see it coming up on the channel here in the near future. I'm still kind of working some stuff out on it. But for go as far as I know, going forward from here, the Remax is going to live in the Gunworks. Yeah. So Dalton's already shot a couple of matches with it, set up like this, did fairly well. Did, the gun, yeah. the gun seems to be shooting all right. Um, we have a uh, Schillen barrel with a JGS chamber on it. Uh, I did not build this setup; it came to me like this. So. We're gonna test it as is and see see what it's capable of. Compare it to like my Voodoo that Kenny down at Desert Precision Gunworks set up for me. Um, you know that gun truly is a hammer. Uh, is it the most accurate thing I've ever shot? Probably not. But I didn't ask Kenny for that. Now I want to, I want to preface that I did not ask Kenny for a one hole gun. I asked him for the most accurate gun I could get that wasn't lot picky. Yeah. I was willing to give up some stuff on that because I can't afford to go buy cases of ammo. Yep. Now. <laughs> we're going to see just how good Kenny is at some CZ stuff. 
I don't know why you're looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> That's your gun, Hoss. <laughs> no, I, I'm not picking on Kenny. Kenny Kenny does good work, a lot of attention to detail. Yep. Um, and I'm hoping to have some stuff, uh, some collaboration stuff with him in the future on some other builds. And who knows? Maybe, depending on how long I keep this Remix, maybe it goes to him. I don't yep. know. Uh, but I want to test it as it is. I want to see. Um, obviously, this gun responds to it some type of tuning system. Yep. Um, this barrel is threaded uh, 5 8 24 instead of half by 28. So uh, the EC tuner we've been kind of playing with and testing. Need a new bloop tube. I don't have a bloop tube for it. Eric Cortina, help me, please. But <laughs> <laughs> that version 2 sure does look nice. <laughs> He'll never watch this, by the way. <laughs> never know. He's going to be at Precision Rifle Expo. Yeah. Oh, we'll talk to and him. And I am going to harass him. All you need to do is make it something he's all about and say, why I bump my shoulders 24 thousandths back. <laughs> <laughs> then they watch it. <laughs> we neck we neck size only, Eric. Yeah. I don't own a mandrel. You can't force me. <laughs> he owns several. <laughs> well, of course he does. So. Cortina fanboy. Yeah, he's going to take him to the, next, <laughs> the Rifle Expo. Eric, can you sign my mantra? <laughs> and my underwear? <laughs> See you there. So <laughs> See you there. Right now, he's canceling. It, it's, if, he sees, if he sees this video, which I highly, highly doubt, after that la last little bit uh -huh. right there, if he saw us walk in there, I guarantee you that's somebody to go running down the range like, shoot me now! <laughs> somebody, somebody tag Eric in this, please. I'll send him a link on Instagram. There we go. I, I follow him on Instagram. He does not follow me back. Yeah. So we've covered the differences between stocks, chassis, how they interact, yep. how they interact with us. We've talked about the mental different, you know, the mental game you, we play in matches and kind of how some of this stuff can affect it. We've also went down about a thousand tangents. And I haven't done one of these videos in a while and I just really wanted to bring this to you guys and, and show you, this is one of those conversations that we have all the time anyway. And this kind of gives you a peek behind the scenes of what we talk about, what we do. Uh, we sit around, uh, Josh drinks monsters and smokes his vape, and I smoke cigars and drink beer. And, and uh, we talk about shooting matches. We think about shooting matches. We do this all the time. But this is truly a mental game, and everything matters, right? Everything matters, and you got to get the setup that fits you the best. And, you know, if this data helps you, I, I truly hope it does. I hope you took something from this. But guys, I appreciate you watching. Stay safe. Keep shooting. Come see us back here next time.